Now, we've heard countless politicians talking up or talking down the prospect of a no deal with the EU. A disaster, say some, or the chance to own our own trade terms, say others. Well, the government insists that technology exists to mitigate new tariff arrangements, but there are still concerns that customs checks will inevitably lead to delays, a possibility difficult to swallow for an industry where time is money. Ellie Price has been to ports on both sides of the channel to find out about the practical steps that are being taken to prepare for the possibility of no deal. Calais, a port that sees two million lorries pass through on their way to and from Dover every year. The closest Le Continent gets to the UK, just over 20 miles. And on a clear day... When we see Dover, it's a sign that it will be raining here. Right. The man in charge of the port here has an equally downbeat forecast for what the future would look like post-Brexit with no deal. That means for, for Calais, you close down the port, you close down the port of Dunkirk, you close down the tunnel and you close down the port of Dunkirk. So, uh, and that is not acceptable. We cannot believe one second that a decision could be taken to slow down this enormous traffic. It will be a disaster for Great Britain, it will be a disaster for uh, for, for Europe and especially for, for, for us on, the, on this coast. They're expanding the port here, but the plans were drawn up before Britain voted to leave the EU and before the possibility of additional customs checks. Everything has been based on the free flow of the traffic. And if the obligations uh, due to this discussion concerning the Brexit oblige us to change anything, it will cost about 20 to 30 millions more, and that's a big problem. Who is going to pay in that case? We cannot pay. If I take away our owner, if I take away the French state, who, who, who remains? Yes. He's hinting at us, the Brits. We have about 250 drivers in the whole of Europe. Up the road in Verne, Belgium, Celine Matthews helps run a haulage firm, which has an average of 30 lorries coming in and out of Dover each day. Oh, so these are all lorries? Yes, the truck has to be there at 10. Half an hour later, it can be a disaster for the factory. Wow, that, that tight. Yeah, that tight. But she says her company, which also owns a number of truck stops, is already making some contingency plans, and there could be some opportunities. In Dover, we just recently bought a bigger plot uh, to have for our parking of our own lorries. Of course, with the Brexit coming, we are planning on making um, a big parking for at least 500 trucks and a building where we can have the right people in to make custom papers so that the trucks can actually wait there before they go to the continent. I'm told one suggestion that could ease congestion at Dover would be extending the Le Touquet Agreement, which currently sees passport checks by French officials in Britain to include goods. That means French customs would check British exports on British soil and vice versa. The government this week said customs checks would need to be made inland as much as possible and customs authorities pre-notified of any consignments. A daunting prospect perhaps for the 130,000 businesses who currently export to the EU who would need to be dealing with customs for the first time. But not this lot. £40 billion pounds worth of goods go out of Southampton every year. It's Britain's number one port for automotive exports. And most of them, like these, are not going to Europe. Around 90% of the trade we handle here at the port of Southampton is with countries outside the EU. And there are lessons to be learnt from that, say Southampton, who are cautiously optimistic. Over 99% of the goods that arrive here in the port of Southampton from countries outside the EU when they get here, they're pre-cleared and they're ready to go. You think it really is that simple? The technology already exists. It can be adapted, it can be refined to enable frictionless trade with the EU. But part of enabling frictionless trade with the EU is political goodwill on both sides of the water. And that could be the biggest sticking point. To ensure, for example, that compatible systems were in place, even no deal would require some kind of deal with trading partners. So there's still a great deal to be agreed. Well, watching that was John.